Hi everyone, my name is Miguel de Villa and I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer. Today I'll be presenting some quick tips on managing your library feature parts as well as managing their external references. To start with, let's take a look at this sample part that I have right here. As I frequently tell my students in the SOLIDWORKS classes I teach here at Go, library features are the easiest thing in the world to make. Making them user-friendly, on the other hand, is quite a bit more work. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at this example. Here, I have the mail portion of a 2-point 3D printable connecting feature that I want to be able to simply drag and drop onto any given face of my model. The design intent is as follows. I want to be able to simply find the library feature in my design library and just drag and drop it onto the face where I want it to go and I expect it to center itself along the bottom edge of that face just like this. Now, in order to get this library feature to this point I had to make several key design choices. Let's go ahead and take a look at a bad example. This was made using some very traditional modeling practices without keeping those considerations I mentioned in mind. You simply drag and drop it onto this face and hold on. The preview doesn't look quite right. It seems to want to live on that face. Not only that, it is asking for not one, but four separate additional references in order to position itself. Going through the motions, it looks like I'll actually need to select the bottom of my part right here then select the edge and then a midpoint along this edge. Good thing I have a sketch point here in this model right here. Let me just go ahead and show it. And I'll go ahead, select sketch point right here, grab that sketch point, and for some reason I have to select the side face now, okay, as well as this side edge. As you can see, the end result is virtually the same thing, yet it took drastically more steps to accomplish. What I'm going to cover in this video is how do I get this experience over here on the right to be as smooth and as easy as possible as you can see here on the left. And we'll discuss along the way a few key things to keep in mind when you're designing a library feature. Now let's examine what makes this library feature so bad? So, just like any other library feature, up here in the upper left hand corner is the references folder. This is a collection of everything that SolidWorks has detected is an external reference that needs to be reselected when bringing in this library feature into another part. We have a plane, this edge, this sketch point, this face, and this edge right here. Let's go through the features to figure out where each of these references comes from. Just like any other library feature, we start out with a dummy solid. As you can see, it has no L on it, meaning that it's not brought in as part of that import. Examining the first extrusion, we can see that sketch 2, this sketch right here, is drawn on the bottom face of this dummy solid, meaning that this effectively determines our placement plane, seen right here. So, what about the edge and sketch point? Well, taking a look at the contents of the sketch itself, we can see that it's a perfectly average sketch with relations and dimensions. Specifically, we have a coincident relation between the origin of the model itself and one of the vertices of the profile to position it centered along the origin. And we also have another coincident relation right here at this vertex, which connects the profile to the edge of the model itself. Because of those two relations, we now have a situation where we require this edge and this point in order to fully position the model. If you're curious about finding which of your relations are external references or qualify as external references, 
the display delete relations command as seen right here has an option to filter out external references which you can now take a look right here and here. What about this face and this edge? That is the result of this cut extrude which gives us that angled face in the end. As we can see, just like before, the sketch plane for this triangular sketch is hosted on this face, meaning that we need that. And also, in terms of the sketch itself, the profile is connected on its left-hand edge to this vertex and that edge of the model itself. But an important thing to keep in mind is that not all relations and dimensions are in fact external. As you can see this 55 degrees as well as this coincident and this coincident right here are two edges of the model as well as sketch entities that are inside of the sketch already as well as part of the library features that we're, we'll be importing into our other model. So it's not that you don't need relations and dimensions, is that you need to be careful about what you are dimensioning and adding sketch relations to. As long as they're entities that are part of the overall library feature import, then you are perfectly fine. It's just that SolidWorks makes it extremely easy to accidentally make relations to external geometry without you even realizing it. Now, let's quickly take a look at the proper way to do this so that we don't have to select these three references. Now let's look at designing that same library feature, but good this time. Just like before, we're starting out with a simple dummy solid like we see right here in front of us. And again, our goal is to create those same features, but only using this face and this edge. Now, if I'm going to use that same profile that I used before on the bottom of the part, well, this face is not suitable for that because it's completely in the wrong orientation. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and have to create some custom reference planes. I'll start out by creating a sketch on this face, and I'm going to go ahead and convert this bottom edge into a construction line, just like so and I'm going to go ahead and make a vertical center line just like this. Now here is a common mistake that I see people making. If you just leave everything visible like so and grab edges and other geometry like you would normally, it's very easy to accidentally create more external relations than you intend. I only need this on edge relation right here. I don't need this midpoint or coincident. So to remedy this, let me go ahead and redo that center line. And instead, I am going to create a center line off to the side, away from any existing geometry, so I don't accidentally make any relations. And I'm also going to use the tab key to hide that solid body. Now I can simply grab the bottom of this center line and this edge right here and create a midpoint relation. The effect is the same as before, we have it everything nicely centered, but if we examine the external relations, we can see that we've drastically reduced it just to one. Now that we have this sketch right here, this is going to be some scaffolding. Scaffolding that I'm going to use to create my reference planes. I need a top plane in quotation marks, so I'm going to make a plane that is uh, perpendicular to this line at the bottom at this point right here. And I'll go ahead and flip the normal as well, just so that everything remains consistent with my sketches that I did in the previous part. It's a good idea to keep the normal vector consistent with what you typically might do otherwise, simply for the fact that horizontal and vertical relations do in fact rely in part on the normal vector of a plane. And that way you don't have to think about it if you do happen to keep them consistent. I'll go ahead and rename it just for good measure. And let's go ahead and make another reference plane. This time we'll make a right plane perpendicular to this line at this point right here, keeping the normals consistent.
Now we're able to begin sketching. Let's go ahead and start by creating a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to go ahead and hide any unnecessary geometry um, first because again I don't want to accidentally make relations to anything I don't specifically intend to. Just like before I need to make sure that I'm only adding those possible external references last. So I'll go ahead and draw my profile out um, away from any pieces of my model just so that I don't accidentally make any relations. Now that my profile is almost complete all I need to do now is find a way to center it at the origin aligned with my initial sketch. So just like before, we're going to rely on that midpoint relation. This relation between this vertex right here and this converted edge. Now all we need to do is finish adding any and all dimensions that we want. And there we go. Now this profile is complete. That all being said, let's go ahead and work on the rest of the model. Now that this sketch is complete, all we need to do is unhide our solid body and turn this into a regular extruded feature uh, at the height that we would like it to be and merging it with the original. Now. We need to get that angled face, and rather than using a fillet or the draft angle command, I'm just going to do it with a cut like we did before, but this time being a lot more careful. Again, best practices are to show only the geometry that you intend to use and hide everything else. I'm going to go ahead and hide this body again and start a sketch on my quotation marks right plane. So as not to accidentally make any references, I'm going to go ahead and draw my cutout profile off to the side, adding in any and all dimensions that I intended to have. Now that it's ready to be locked in and positioned, I'll go ahead and create a coincident relation between this point right here and this sketch line specifically. Not only that, but I'm going to go ahead and now unhide the original body and I'm going to simply make a coincident relation between this upper right hand vertex and the corner of that other boss extrude, thus fully defining it. Now taking a look at our external references once again, we can see that we in fact have very few. Only the coincident relation to this sketch line which, as we know, will be part of the library feature, and this coincident to this boss extrude right here, which, again, is part of the library feature. So we're all good here. Now let's go ahead and hit Extruded Cut, and I'm going to go ahead and use the Through All End condition so that I don't have to input any lengths or any additional reference geometry. Now that that feature is complete, our library feature is ready to be exported. Let's go ahead and hide any unnecessary geometry just to be tidy. And a fast way of adding a library feature part to your library is to hit the design library icon, go ahead and select the folder you would like to put it in, and hitting the add to library button right here. I'll go ahead and select it. Now all I need to do under items to add is select all the features that I intend to add. By selecting the sketch, both planes, and both features, I'm grabbing everything that I need to create this feature. And the only features, or rather geometry, that these five need to create themselves are the initial placement face, this one right here, and the bottom edge of that face. Now you can choose whatever name you would like as well as any additional new location. Just make sure under file type right here that it says library feature part down here in the bottom left hand corner. Once all that's done, all you need to do is hit check and as you can see the feature tree has now changed to reflect that of a library feature part. 
to double check that we did everything properly, let's go over to our references. And now, as we can see, we only need that placement plane and that edge. Additionally, for additional configurability, you can rename your dimensions as you can create locating and internal dimensions to help position and change the size of various features within the part. And also you can generate configurations other than the default so that the user will only have to select from a preset uh, number of sizes for that given library feature. Now let's go ahead and test this into action. Going back to this starting point right here, let's go to the design library. Let's give this a quick refresh just to see if it can find our base part. And there it is right here. Let's drag, drop it onto this face. Excellent. And as we can see, we only need to select that bottom edge of the model. And I'll just go ahead and select it right here. The feature is able to complete perfectly. I'll hit OK. And there we go. Thank you so much for this not so quick tips on how to manage external references and design library feature parts. This has been Miguel de Villa, Applications Engineer here at Go Engineer. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.